Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Jake Seikiniko. Welcome back to a new video. Today I have something really exciting for you. I know it's been a while, but there was a major leak or a sneak peek update to the upcoming Dungeons update. If you've been online within the last week or so, you potentially have seen this. This is called the Catacombs Entrance and it basically just shows off where the new dungeons potentially might just start off. You have the blacksmith, you have a shop, with probably new potions and you have the gatekeeper. After that we also got some new information about an upcoming reforge update that potentially has the ability to give you more more uniqueness within your build. Let's say you have you want to have more mana or health or defense or maybe damage then you can do so with the new reforge. At least that's what I think is why they did. And since that we basically were left in the dark. Until now. Two hours ago Jar Environment posted a video to his Twitter account which has some insane leaks or news about the dungeons update. First up I'm gonna link it down below if you want to watch it by yourself but I'm gonna go into detail about what we can see in the video. In just a second I just really quickly want to talk about one more thing that he mentioned underneath, his video, uh, underneath the video. He stated that this was just a testing session to showcase progress to other admins we usually test with handpicked pla uh, hand players. We're currently in the polishing and balancing phase. Many details in the video aren't final, but close. This session was on floor one, the easiest. Which basically means that, yes, they are working on it and they're in the polishing and balancing phase, which, which is pretty cool because it potentially is in, in, let's say, the ending stage of where it potentially is going to come out. But there is a lot that could change and we should just expect changes to be made to the current version of what they showed off. The last thing though, what he said with this session was on floor 1, the easiest, that basically gets a little scary in the end of the video. Alright, but I've been talking way too lot, let's just jump right in. Right off the get go, this by the way is the video that he, that he posted, you can see something called the Crypt Dreadlord. It has 46,000 HP and is level 26. This is really really weird. You can, for example, compare it to a Crypt Ghoul, which has 2000 health and is level 30. If you take this into consideration, then this means that the dungeons have absolutely new standards. On the right, you can see the scoreboard, which says that they're in the catacombs, which basically confirms the fact that Mort, the gatekeeper, is the potential entrance to the catacombs. And then you have three things that are listed underneath that. The keys, which are there to open doors, I'll show that off later. The time elapsed, which basically means they spent 10 minutes and 30 seconds within this dungeon. And the dungeon cleared percentage, which means within 10 minutes they cleared almost 45%, which means they're potentially gonna take 20 to 30 minutes to finish one of the dungeons. I'm not quite sure if dungeon means floor or this is the entire dungeon and then you start out with a newly generated dungeon. But yeah, that's basically as much as we can say. And underneath you have the dungeon, let's say, party, with all the players that you have in your party. I'm gonna talk about more about this later on because I have an idea of what this actually means. As you can see, you have, you have some kind of letters in there, which potentially could mean there are different classes, like for example, a wizard or a tank or let's say ninja, I have no idea. This is just an assumption because you only have letters. You also see the names and the health. After that, if you just really quickly skip the part where he starts attacking it, the Crypt Dreadlord explodes and drops something called the Wither Key. This not only is interesting because it's a key, but also because it has the name Wither inside and as you can see it emits like the Wither explosions. This is basically just really cool to see because then you can see that the Wither artifact that has been in the Dark Auction for quite some time without any purpose now potentially gets some purpose actually within the first dungeon. After that, whenever he runs around the corner and approaches this new enemy, you can see that the enemy has 1100 health and is named something with T and A, which also is a zombie and also level two, uh, 26. This is pretty weird because it has an insane difference to the 46,000 health Dreadlord that was also level 26. I'm not quite sure whatever uh, what exactly that is, but after he runs into the room, because he basically ignores the zombie, on the left hand side you can see a skeleton, 
Later on you will see that this skeleton is called the Scared Skeleton. It has 36,300 HP and is also level 26, which potentially is the main level of the enemies within this, within this dungeon. As soon as he approaches the skeleton, it starts running away, which basically indicates just that the Scared Skeleton is scared of players. I don't really get that because if it's scared, it doesn't really attack, does it? And after that, something really cool happens. He opens up the chat. And the chat normally isn't that important, but right here you can take a lot out of it. I'm gonna start right on top, because you can see you can see a message from another admin uh, called Nitroholic, and he has a prefix called Ghost. I first up thought that this might potentially be some kind of class, but if you read the next line, where J of Armin got revived by Miniclun, you can take this and apply it onto that, uh, onto that ghost prefix, which potentially is a dead player that it has to be revived. I don't know when or how you revive people, and I don't know if, if that is a correct answer, because none of the other admins types within this video, so this is just an assumption. It could potentially also be some kind of class. But since Nitroholic doesn't appear on the scoreboard, that's the thing that I was talking earlier, the, the people on the scoreboard might potentially only be the people that are still alive. Which means, if you take Nitroholic within the dungeon party, you'd have six people, which would exceed the max amount of people on a co-op island, which would be five. That would actually be kind of, kind of cool, because you could have bigger or smaller groups, but like I said, this is just an assumption. After that, if you skip a, a couple of messages down below, you can see something called the, dun uh, the dungeon buff. Miniclone found something called the Blessing of Life. The Blessing of Life is an effect that is giving you HP and health regeneration. In this case, it's the Blessing of Life 5, which gives 15% HP, uh, percent HP and 15% health regeneration. Later on in the video, Jerry Varman finds something called the, uh, the Blessing of Power 1, which means you can find good or bad stat boosts within the dungeon that could help you out. After that, he uses an ability called Barrage, I have no or barrage. I have no idea what that is. I'm not sure if this was already in the game. If it was, I'm really sorry. But if not, that could potentially lead to some kind of new ability. But that's also everything we got on that. After that, you have a quick explanation of the wither key. It's used to open golden doors. I'm not quite sure what a golden door looks like, and I'm not quite sure what's behind or how to use it on a golden door. But since he collects one wither key after the golden door opens up the door again and then collects one more key the wither keys are potentially the main keys within this dungeon or within this level after that he takes out the magical map this just represents the dungeon plan which basically reminds you of games like binding of isaac where you have a plan of which parts of the dungeon you have completed and which are still as you can see with question marks either unsolved or not opened yet if you, for example, take a look at the middle, you have this these two yellow pixels. This could potentially be a golden door. After that, he proceeds to walk around with the map in his hand. He comes by the, ske uh, the scared skeleton. Here you can see not only its health, but also its name. I'm really not sure what it does since it doesn't attack him here either. But yeah, that's another enemy that we know of. And when he comes back and pulls out a bow, you might notice that this is not a bow that we used to know. It's called Fair Machine Gun Bow, where the fair is potentially just a reforge, and since it's blue, you can take an assumption that it's a rare bow. And here comes the important and really interesting part. I have to give credits where credits are due, so thank you very much, Lugi, for showing me this. But as you can see, the bow has taken damage. In the right top corner, you can see the bow is on 97% on damage, which means the bow, unlike other weapons in the game, takes damage and loses durability. This actually opens up an interesting part where you could potentially get weapons or armor pieces even within the dungeon and you can only use it to an extended amount within the dungeon. After the dungeon closes or maybe after the item breaks, you no longer have the item. After that, he teleports to Miniclun where he proceeds to, either on purpose or actually on accident, fail some kind of quest or riddle or puzzle which basically just represents tic-tac-toe. And after Miniclune lost in tic-tac-toe, he starts running to some kind of switch. After he triggers the switch, a secret gateway to some kind of chest opens. I'm not sure what can be in the chest, but again, just like we saw earlier in the chat, 
you got something called the dungeon buff. This time it's the blessing of power 1, like I said, which gives strength and crit damage, but it's only power 1. So there potentially are 5 or even more different levels on these power-ups, and you either like can stack them or level them up. I'm not quite sure how this works, but it basically grants everyone a stat bonus. This is pretty cool, especially at the end of the video, because this is going to be needed quite a bit. And after that, we're approaching the end of the video. He's running towards the newest opening of the dungeon. As you can see, there is a lot of enemies in front of him. He starts to walk in, and after he walks in, if you stop for a second, you can not only see that there is a lot of enemies, but you can take a look and see some kind of details. You have only zombies and skeletons as far as I can see, which potentially indicates that the entire dungeon is going to base around those. But you can also see from the green name within the middle, which is something with healing, that these monsters have insane amounts of health. The healing monster has 37,950 HP and he has a green name, which could potentially mean that this is some kind of mini boss or some kind of new runic monster but since there is no proof on that that's just an assumption and if we now skip to the last and probably most scary part of it he runs in sees something called the crypt lurker which is a zombie that throws bones sees the bone coming and right as the bone comes and hits him he gets an insane amount of damage. I know for a fact that the protector armor is probably not the best thing to wear within the dungeon, but since he had a 1500 health and 800 defense, it's insane that the lurker deals such an insane amount of damage. Alright, after that, the video ends. So what can we take from this? This was an insane insight of what dungeons could potentially be or feel like in the future, and it's pretty cool to see what they have been working on and what they've gotten so far. But there's also two more things that I want to mention and basically point out. First up, it's pretty cool that you can now from, uh, from now on also take guesses that skeletons and zombies, as well as potentially wither, is something that you want to prepare for. And I'm taking a wink at Revenant Armor or the Wither Artifact, for example, which for the first time gains a purpose in the game except for the reforges on it. But not only that, but I also want to mention that as you can see, this is absolutely late game stage. As I previously said, this, like he said in his in his comment, was the first floor, the easiest of them. Which basically means that there is going to be a lot, a lot of increased damage and a lot of increased difficulty within this update. So if you want to prepare for it, get ready to get into late game because you're probably not going to get there with hardened diamond armor or with a pretty new account. And since that's basically it, uh, since I only wanted to show off this video to keep you guys informed, I would just really quickly just give a really quick shout out to Monster because I don't really watch Skyblock YouTubers, but since he's a friend, I watched his video about the Dungeons Preparation Update video, which is insanely cool. You should absolutely check it out. I'm gonna also link it down in the description. But with that, I also recommend you watch, watch preparation videos. Don't believe everything everyone says because nobody has an idea, just like you. But it's probably a good idea to to prepare for it because it's going to be hard as heck as you could probably tell. Alright, and since this is basically it for the video, if you've been wondering what these two pets behind me meant because you normally cannot spawn two of them, this is going to be my next video. I've been wanting to do this video actually before I did this, but then the sneak peek came out. So if you want to stick with me and basically get to know about whatever is happening behind me, Feel free to subscribe to me because I am hopefully going to make a lot more content, especially with the new updates that are hopefully coming out as soon as possible. But since this is basically it for this video, I would really appreciate a like if you like this video. And if you want to see my equipment, for example, or if you have any interest in my opinion on the Dungeons update, then feel free to comment it down below. Like I said, show me your love, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And since this is it, thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day.